welcome. Since we've established a bit of social distance, allow me to remove my mask. Welcome for being uh, to, to our event today. We are glad to have you here with us. Please allow me to establish protocol before we rise for our national anthem. Welcome to our Honorable Minister, Andrew Paris, Minister for the Ministry of Blue Economy and Civil Aviation. Our Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Kennedy Carrillo for the Ministry of Blue Economy and Civil Aviation. Welcome to our CEO for the Ministry of Tourism and Diaspora Relations, Ms. Nicole Solano. Welcome to our Acting Fisheries Administrator, Mr. Rigoberto Quintana. Our special guest, Dr. Damien Chap, Senior Scientist and Director of the Center of Shark and Rays Conservation Program for Moat Marine Laboratory, an aquarium in Sarasota, Florida. Welcome to all the representatives from our Ministry of Economic Development, our Ministry of Sustainable Development, Climate Change and Disaster Risk Management, representatives from Belizean High Seas Fisheries Unit, the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism Secretariat, our fisheries and fishing cooperatives, the National Shark Working Group members, the Shark Fishermen Association, other staff from the Ministry of Blue Economy and Civil Aviation and all its sister agencies, members of the media, our other invited guests, and of course, our guests and viewers virtually. We are still very much in a time of COVID-19. And while we celebrate today the work of our fisheries department and the Ministry of Blue Economy, we also celebrate our small progress as we fight this virus that has wreaked havoc on our world. We celebrate today because we're actually able to see each other. And although we're behind masks, at least we can establish some human contact. I ask you to please rise so that we celebrate our nation with the playing of our national anthem. <laughs> Bye. 
please be seated. We don't have a designated prayer, but I would like to recognize God in our presence. We're a prayerful nation. Um, we are in the midst of most unpredictable times. And for many of us who are spiritual and conscious of a, of a being higher than our own, we're thankful that we're able to be with each other. We're thankful that he's spared our lives to be together. We're thankful that he's blessed the fruit of our work nationally as the Ministry of Blue Economy continues to work for the improvement of our nation and our people on a very individual level. Today, our program says, recognizing partnerships for shark conservation and management in Belize. Now we're a nation that prides ourselves in protecting our natural resources, protecting our heritage. So today is a celebration for the ministry. Today is a celebration for its partners. Today is a celebration for fisher folks. Because our marine resources, our blue economy is life and livelihood. I would like to invite our CEO, Ms. Kennedy Carrillo, for the official welcome. But before I do so, please allow me to formally introduce you to her with just a few words and details on her credentials. Ms. Carrillo earned her bachelor's degree in psychology at the University of Louisville and her master's degree at the University of West Indies. Over the past 26 years, she has been instrumental in the work of development and sexual health at the national, regional, and international levels. CEO Ms. Carrillo served as the executive director for the National AIDS Commission of Belize for four years. And for the past 15 years, through her very own consultancy firm, MC Consultancy, she has been providing technical support to organizations in the areas and programs for human resource management, research and strategic planning, policy development, monitoring and evaluation. Training and several diverse aspects of sustainable development and sexual health. She has served as the Caribbean liaison for the regional Latin American and Caribbean platform of the Global Fund and as a Caribbean researcher for Outright Action International. CEO Ms. Carrillo brings to the Ministry of Blue Economy and Civil Aviation a combination of important managerial skills to lead the team of experts at the Department of Civil Aviation, Coastal Zone Management Authority and Institute, Belize Airport Authority, and the Fisheries Department, all of which falls under our new Ministry of Blue Economy's portfolio. CEO, thank you for your service and we welcome you to the podium. Thank you, Ms. Halak. Allow me to introduce myself, Kennedy Carrillo, two vaccines, six feet established, and this is how COVID is treating us now. Minister Andrea Perez, Minister of Blue Economy and Civil Aviation, Nicole Solano, Chief Executive Officer of the Ministry of Tourism and Diaspora Relations, Mr. Cruz, representing CEO Kenrick Williams, who is unable to be here of the Ministry of Sustainable Development, Climate Change and Disaster Risk. Mr. Damian Chapman, scientist, and a new director of Center for Shark Research at Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium in Sarasota, Florida. Ms. Beverly Wade, our new Blue Economy Director. Mr. Rigoberto Quintana, Acting Fisheries Administrator. Friends, distinguished guests, all of some of our partner agencies, such as the Belize High Seas Fisheries Unit, the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism Secretariat, the Fishing Cooperatives, the National Park um, Shark Working Group, the Shark Association, staff of Ministry of Blue Economy, all other ministry partners, 
and of course, members of the media. What an honor and a privilege for me to be granted the opportunity to wish you a pleasant good afternoon and to welcome you to this momentous event, recognizing key partnerships for shark conservation and management in Belize. It is a beautiful day when we have the opportunity to celebrate such a beautiful marine treasure as our sharks, among many other unique marine wildlife that we can boast of. We are proud to welcome the Ellen, the Generous Fund, and our partners at Moat Marine and Laboratories who join us in this important initiative. Today, we celebrate Belize's and this government's undying commitment to the conservation of our marine heritage. As the new Ministry of the Blue Economy, we recognize our important mandate of finding that fine balance between taking advantage of our blue resources and spaces for economic growth, but doing so in a manner that is environmentally sustainable and responsible. Trust me, it is not an easy dance to learn. Our feet are well founded, though, in the principle of our newly defined vision and mission. A vision that will see a blue economy that is productive, resilient, and vibrant, contributing substantially to the socioeconomic well-being of this country we love so much. We are set on a mission of increasing the gross domestic product of our country through a thriving blue economy development pathway that is harmonized, innovative, and socially just, supported by a robust science-based management regime of our aquatic resources and spaces to improve the lives of all Belizeans and those that live in Belize. Sounds like a lot of beautiful lyrics, right? Not to worry, we also have the choreography, the passion, the harmony, and the expertise in dance and song to make our blue economy a resounding success. I welcome all of you to this event, and I thank you. In the words of Ellen DeGeneres, the sharks thank you too. They may not be able to thank you in words, but they thank you with their eyes. Welcome. Thank you for that welcome, and indeed today is a celebration of what has become traditional for Belize, the sustainable use and management of our natural resources. CEO mentioned in her presentation um, and in her welcome two of our partners. One key of those partners sits around the table at the head table with us today. And she mentioned the other, Ellen DeGeneres Foundation. I'd just like to spend a little time to look at the Ellen Fund and introduce you to the Ellen Fund formally for Belize. The Ellen Fund supports global conservation efforts for endangered species, and it was founded in 2018 by Portia de Rossi as a gift for Ellen the Generous. Their first project was the support of a 12-acre science and education campus for the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund helping them save the wild mountain gorillas. In 2021, the Ellen Fund launched their endangered campaign to raise $1 million to support the species and communities featured in the Ellen narrated documentary, Endangered. Ellen Fund also supports people, uplifting women, and conservationists of color 
and inspiring the hope that anyone can make a difference. Now, doesn't that sound like a, a partner for Belize? Can we please give our partner and our funder a round of applause of appreciation? Now, one of the things I learned about this shark conservation and management initiative that has been ongoing in Belize for quite a bit of time is that it seeks to mirror what we have done in the past for jaguars and other apex species, as well as indigenous plants and wildlife and flora, um, in, flora in our coxcomb basin. In fact, one of the quotations in the PR pitch says we are repeating the protection for the coxcomb of the sea. Now that sounds like we are about to make worldwide name for ourselves for another time. This time in our World Heritage Site and around our World Heritage Site in the protection of another apex species. Now I'm not a scientist. I'm not a conservationist, I'm not an environmentalist, but I do like the cushy feeling I get inside every time I hear we talk about protecting and sustainably using our resources. I will leave the science to somebody like our acting fisheries administrator, Mr. Rigoberto Quintana, to present to us the work that has been done in the shark conservation and management program for the past few years. Now, Mr. Rigoberto has stepped into some big shoes, right, Mr. Rigo? <laughs> he takes over acting as a fisheries administrator because the Minister of Blue Economy has claimed Ms. Wade as the director in the Ministry of Blue Economy. Uh, not much jealousy because what I'm noticing is that there's some real tight, close-knit partnership going on between ministry and department. So they were glad to, you know, just lend the sister to the ministry a little bit. And Mr. Rigo stepped into those shoes, but he is quite a marine giant of his own. Mr. Quintana is currently acting as the fisheries administrator, sorry. He holds a master's of science degree in sustainable aquaculture from the University of St. Andrews in the United Kingdom. He has been employed by the fisheries department for over 21 years. That's a career. That's a lifetime. Thank you for your service, Mr. Quintana. He started working in the department as assistant fisheries officer. And given his passion and his dedication in fisheries management and his academic achievements, he has been promoted over the years. In 2016, Mr. Quintana was promoted from the post of fisheries officer to senior fisheries officer. Mr. Quintana has been involved in several regional and national in initiatives that have contributed to the sustainable management of fisheries resources in Belize. He also leads the National Fisheries Enforcement in Belize and has contributed to the improved fisheries legislative framework, such as the draft fisheries regulations and the modernized Fisheries Resources Act. We welcome him to the podium to talk to us about another hallmark program and the continuation of a career well respected. Mr. Quintana. Thank you, Mistress of Ceremony. With protocols already established, I bid you welcome and great respect. Ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good afternoon to everybody. The fishing industry continues to contribute to the national economy of Belize and creating employment opportunities for coastal fishing communities. In 2020, there were a total of 3,188 licensed fisher folks who contributed um, a total of 34.5 34 million in export earnings for this country. While the COVID-19 pandemic affected other economic sectors, especially tourism, the fishery sector continued to provide employment and export earnings during this period. The primary export commodities were spiny lobster and queen conch. 
The domestic shark fishery is a small scale fishery of less than 60 fishers who benefit directly from this resource. However, um, there has been a significant decline in shark production and export since the COVID-19 pandemic due to closure of borders and the banning of primary fishing gear in 2020. Shark landings similarly um, declined um, to 4,500 pounds in 2020. Compared to 2019, we had exported about 62,000 pounds. The department has been working towards the conservation and management of sharks in Belize since the early 2000s. In 2005, the department established the National Shark Working Group, comprised of representatives from the fishing cooperatives, fishermen, um, the BFCA, the High Seas Fisheries Unit, Customs Department, CITES authorities, NGOs, tourism, and academia. This working group is responsible for providing advisory support to the Fisheries Department and the CITES Management Authority, which is the Forestry Department, on issues pertaining to the sustainable management of sharks and rays. In 2005, the first National Plan of Action for the Management and Conservation of Sharks was developed and adopted. The main goal of the NPOA sharks is to establish conservation, management, and long-term sustainable use of sharks in Belize to fulfill the commitments made by Belize as signatory to the FAO Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries and other non-binding and binding instruments. Since the inception of the NPOA sharks for Belize, significant new information has been accrued to what was previously limited data sets on species abundance, distribution, diversity, and maturity, as well as details on shark fisheries catch, effort, and trade. This information contributed significantly towards the revision of the NPOA sharks in 2017, um, which we have established this plan for five years. In 2011, um, the department made some significant progress in strengthening regulations for shark fisheries. Um, these regulations allow the administrator to determine cash quotas, areas of extraction for fishing of sharks, and the number of licenses to be issued on an annual basis. Regulations also establish a closed fishing season from August to October, the full protection of North Sharks, prohibition of shark finning, and stipulate that both shark meat and fins must be landed. The regulation also include provision for licensing, both for fishing and export, and fishers are required to submit cash data to the fisheries department. Since legislation was enacted, the department has engaged the technical staff, researchers, and fishers to carry out scientific and data collection initiatives, as well as capacity building. Scientists, including Dr. Chapman, and the work undertaken by Mara Alliance in Belize have contributed significantly in providing recommendations in making more informed management decisions. Today, the Ministry of Blue Economy and, and Civil Aviation and the Fisheries Department are recognizing partnership for shark conservation and management in Belize. Dr. Chapman has been conducting shark research in Belize since 2000. And in 2019, he has partnered with fishers from Riversdale um, to implement standard coastal shark surveys that spans from the barrier reef to the coast, whereby fishers are collecting data to inform fishers. That is very key here that um, we are engaging um, some of the licensed fishers to work with the research program with Dr. Chapman. This work has contributed in establishing the optimal fishing locations alternate gear types, especially with the band of gillnets. Um, some trials were being done with long lines, different hooks, um, bait type, and recent there has been tagging and satellite tracking of sharks, especially around the atolls. The work undertaken by Dr. Chapman in coordination with fishers has now provided key information to the fisheries department and the National Shark Working Group. In 2019, some regulations were discussed and recommendations were submitted to the Fisheries Department by the National Shark Working Group. The recent work has also informed and supported the proposed amendment to the shark regulation. Recently, 
the government of Belize um, cabinet has approved the passage of the following proposed regulations. The creation of two miles buffer zone around the three atolls of Belize, which prohibits any form of shark fishing. Prohibit the use of unanchored or drifting long lines in these areas. Prohibit the use of hooks greater than 12 o for other fishing activities. So fishers can still um, do other commercial activities like fin fish um, fishing. It's just that we regulate the size of hook in these areas. Also, extending the close season from the month of May to the month of October. Previously, the shark season, as is now, is from um, August to October. The Ministry of Law, Economy, and Civil Aviation proposes to enact this legislation as soon as possible, since we already got Cabinet's blessing. This new shark regulation will further strengthen the management regime for the shark fishery resources in Belize and will afford full protection of sharks within these buffer areas in the three atolls. The enforcement of legislation will also require strengthened partnership with co-managers and funding partners who have already made commitments to support the fisheries department and the ministry in enforcing um, the new fisheries regulations related to sharks. Dr. Chapman has been very key in providing capacity opportunities in various aspects of shark management. Recently, Dr. Chapman convened a training workshop in utilizing DNA toolkit for the identification of shark species by testing the tissue samples. Um, this workshop built capacity within the fisheries department for both technical and enforcement staff. This DNA toolkit will be donated to the department. It's right here close to me right now. And we, we think that this, this equipment will be very handy at this time um, especially to do more science work in the field and also to, to monitor um, shark products um, before they're being exported. Just to ensure that the, the, the CITES listed species in Appendix 2 are, are properly regulated and it also requires CITES for export. So this will enhance our capacity. The department is also working closely with the the Organization of Fisheries and Aquaculture in Central America. Actually, we just convened the um, the second, the, you know, the meeting of the CEOs, and some commitment has been made to look at the transboundary illegal fishing in this area, especially between Belize, Guatemala, and Honduras. Um, taking into consideration the regional strategy on IUU fishing, focus on national waters and coastal communities. In concluding, the department congratulates and expresses sincere appreciation to Dr. Chapman and his team, including the fishers, for their effort investing in shark research in Belize. We look forward to continue collaborating with Dr. Chapman and his team in further strengthening the management of sharks in Belize. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Quintana. I believe you can safely say that one of the things that was clear from his presentation is that the work was bottom up. There was a lot of research, a lot of stakeholder involvement. Ms. Wade would say, fishers for fishers. Right? Fishers doing and helping with the research. Fishers sharing their traditional industry knowledge, resource knowledge. Researchers taking that collective, traditional, and anecdotal experience and knowledge, putting the science to it, and then presenting regulations to protect species. Now, if that's not through commitment to stakeholder involvement, I don't know what is. So I want to recognize the fishers that are among us today and those that are not for the involvement they had in this initiative for their proactive involvement in the development of our resources, and for their jealous guarding of our natural resources, ensuring that we will be able to live and experience the beauty of our resources for years to come. Allow me to, before I introduce our special guest, Dr. Chapman, to read his bio, and also to recognize yet another partner, um, one of the 
technical specialist from this partner we will recognize has worked closely with Dr. Chapman and others. Um, those of you in environment in here would find the name Rabinowitz quite familiar. Am I pronouncing that right, Ms. Amanda Acosta? Right? He was affiliated with the work for Coxcomb. And there's another name who's affiliated with the Georgia Aquarium who has come to replicate that in the Coxcomb of the sea for us with sharks. The Georgia Aquarium made available to us uh, technical expertise as well as equipment. It is a leading 501c3 nonprofit organization located in Atlanta, Georgia. That is a humane certified by American Humane and accredited by Alliance of Marine Mammal Parks and Aquariums and the Association of Zoos and Aquarium. Georgia Aquarium is committed to working on behalf of all marine life through education, preservation, exceptional animal care, and research across the globe. The Georgia Aquarium continues its mission each day to inspire, educate, and entertain its millions of guests about the aquatic biodiversity throughout the world through its hundreds of exhibits and tens of thousands of animals across its eight major galleries. Now I'll tell you that aquarium firsthand is out of this world. I stood when it first opened in the winter for an hour and a half to get inside. But once I was inside, I forgot that I was freezing outside to be able to see what I saw. It is indeed impressive. So we thank the Georgia Aquarium and we thank Moat Laboratory for bringing to us skills that complement our traditional knowledge and pride for our resources. Dr. Damien Chapman, senior scientist and the new director of the Center for Shark Research and Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquariums in Sarasota, Florida, is a, well, we'll call him an adopted son, an adopted child of Belize. Is that okay, Dr. Chapman? <laughs> Dr. Chapman recently served as the lead scientist for the international initiative Global Finprint, the world's largest ever reef shark and ray survey. At Moat, Dr. Chapman will build upon the lessons learned from Finpoint, as well as the legacy of Moat's long-standing shark programs to improve shark management around the world. He has worked on sharks and rays in Belize for over two decades. Well, he's he's a son twice over. It's 10 years to get nationality, right, Minister? So he's a son two years over if he's been doing research for two decades in Belize. Dr. Chapman, please welcome to the podium and enlighten us on the work that you've been doing here. Thank you again for your service. All right, thank you very much. I'm gonna help with the computer. So I have a small presentation to show, um, but I wanted to thank everybody and, and being so welcoming, coming to Belize. I, I came here in 2000. I came here in 2000 expecting to come one and done and do a little survey of sharks and then be on my way, but uh, Belize sucked me in and I've been here, coming here all the time ever since, so, so I'm really excited uh, to be here and any time I can get a passport, I'd be very happy to accept it. So I'm from New Zealand and the United States, so that would be passport number three. So that's, that would be quite a good one. All right, so um, one of the great things about the National Shark Working Group is that it really is a bottom-up thing where everybody comes together for a shared goal of making sure sharks don't disappear in Belize. You know, we all come at it from different angles, but we just want to put all the facts on the table, all the science on the table, and work together to make sure these animals are still around and people, in some places at least, can still fish them uh, in a sustainable way. Is the plug in? It's flowing. We need, we need assistance with this one. We're in a different channel. Okay. Someone come for uh, take assistance. <laughs> it's 
It's always technology, isn't it? Does anyone know any good jokes? All right, am I good to start? All right, take two. Um, I did think of a joke, but I'm not going to tell it. I'll wait till after when we have some drinks. How's about that? Um, so, so yeah, so the launch of the cooperative shark tagging program, it's again something that came through from the National Shark Working Group. Um, and what it's all about, this is the heart of it. It's about the fisher folk, the, fisher man the fishery managers, and the researchers all coming together for this shared goal of making sure the sharks in Belize stay in Belize and that we, we still have this resource around for generations to come. And we have so many wonderful students from my former organization, Florida International University, and we have fishers from Riversdale, and we've had various members of the fisheries department come with us. And, you know, we have these meetings and we sit in a conference room and gradually over time we got to know each other and we really had a lot in common so we decided to do some stuff in the field together and, and go out. Um, so we started by just uh, basically we would, we would hire the fishers to go take us and do some basic tagging of, of small sharks uh, just like this. This is uh, Hector Martinez who's here today tagging a, a small shark and <clears throat> what's really cool about this for me and I, I hope the fishers would say the same as we learn a lot from each other like I you know I don't know everything about sharks uh, uh, but I learn a lot from speaking with the fishers and one thing for sure is that I've been at Glover's Reef for 20 years and I've only ever caught four tiger sharks so I didn't really think there was a lot of tiger sharks around Glover's Reef but I went out one day with uh, Omar Fox who's here today and in one day we went out and sure enough we caught this tiger shark. So hopefully the video plays. So this is a nice big, about a, about a 10 foot tiger shark off Glover's Reef. And so, you know, the fishers are telling me these shark, tiger sharks are actually kind of common. They were just deeper than where I'm used to seeing them in some of the other places that I research. So this little, this little piece of information that's very, you know, normal for them is, is something that's good for me and helps. This is one of my students, Devanshi Kasana, and this is her tagging her, I think it's her first tiger shark that she ever tagged uh, with the fishes. So it gives us access to animals because uh, the, these are wonderful captains who have great knowledge of the area. Um, you see they like the sharks. Chippy, one of the guys, is touching the shark on his nose right there. And there she goes. She's, she's tagged this big, beautiful 10-foot tiger shark at Glover's. So very nice. So... You know, we started working together, we realized, well, yeah, we like each other. It's kind of cool to be on the boat together. We learn from one another, so, and we're getting the science done and, and giving it to the fisheries department, and sometimes they're coming out with us. So we did some fundraising to launch sort of a bigger scale, thinking a bit bigger than just a few trips. And 
We got, found, we got funding from the Rowe Foundation uh, through a very good friend of mine, Greg Manicharian, who's a great friend of Dr. Aaron Rabinowitz. And Lucas Manicharian is here today for his family, and he's been camping at Glover's Reef with us, uh, learning how to do the shark tagging and such. And the, the Ellen Fund has already been, been mentioned as another great partner. Uh, Georgia Aquarium is a great partner, also the Earthwatch Institute, the Mays Family Foundation, and Betsy and Peter Snow. And what all these people got together is they've given us the resources to do a really cool initiative, which we're sort of soft launching over the last year, but now that COVID's over, we can come back, we can hit this really hard. And, and, and I'm really excited because it's going to be all of Belize that can join us in this adventure. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the fish's great knowledge of you know, how and where to catch the sharks. Uh, and we're going to combine that with our little bit of knowledge about certain types of research techniques. So we're going to be catching these sharks and we're putting a, a device on them, on their fin actually, that we, that we can actually use to track them. And the idea is, is that the shark will be released back into the water and every time the fin pops the surface, the satellite tag will get picked up by satellites and we'll be able to see where that shark is. Because one of the very key things, some sharks stay in one place. So some of the sharks that are inside the new coxswain of the sea, well, they'll, they'll sort of go their whole life in there. But other sharks will be moving around. And they might be crossing boundaries between countries and such. So we need to know which countries do Belize really need to engage with to protect the sharks. So I'll give it, here's another video that I think um, Hector shot with his phone. This is one of the species we, we've tagged already. We've tagged five sharks already with satellite tags. This is a silky shark. This was caught off Lighthouse Reef. This one was very vigorous, showed his belly. And the satellite tag is on. It's a very, very pretty shark. I think this one was about seven feet long. And what we get from the satellite tag is every time it it pops up, we, we you know the fins around the surface, uh, we get to see where it goes. So we uh, this is just a, a plot showing this particular shark, which I think we called Belican. If I, I don't know why we call it Belican, but some so this is a funny name, but we call it Belican. Uh, Belican went to Mexico. He actually hung around Lighthouse Reef for a little while, and then he took off. Uh, maybe he exported some Belican to Mexico. Um, and he hung around in this place that we don't really know too much about, but he really hung out there. So this tells us right off the bat, you know, if you want to manage silky sharks, you've got to think about engaging with Mexico because they, they share the resource. Um, so this is a video uh, of a tiger shark. This is another big one. Yes, a big tiger shark. That one give a little tail thrash. And this one sort of bounced around in the deep water around the atolls and uh, made some pretty big movements, as yet has not gone to Mexico. Um, but, you know, we're getting some good information about how the tigers, you know, they don't just stick to one atoll, they, they bounce around and use lots of different places, which, which makes sense. They're a big shark, uh, and we know they do this in other parts of the world as well. Uh, so I'm very excited. I, I hope you can see that I have great uh, uh, respect for the fishermen, and we've come together to get this information. And they have boats that are a nice size. We can fit a few people on there. But we really want to share this with all of Belize and all of the world. So uh, some friends at uh, an organization called OSEARCH in the United States, uh, they actually do a lot of shark tagging like this. And they put the shark tracks up on their what they call their shark tracker. They tag great white sharks in various places. And they were kind enough to agree to put the Belize sharks on their website so that everybody in Belize, if you're interested, you can go to this uh, website here, and if you go through, you'll, you'll see sort of this big map, and then you find Belize, and you'll see this little thing here. It says five. Those are the five sharks that are tagged in Belize. And you might be into, and if you zoom in, you'll see this is Turnoff Atoll, and you see there's two little shark icons. There's one right there. Um, if you click on that, 
you can actually see the tracking history of that shark. So that's actually Bellican right there. And you can see he can do that, that movement. Um, and it gives you a little bit of information about Bellican. And so everybody in Belize, everybody in the world can follow us on this little partnership and adventure um, and, and see these sharks as they go through their lives. And so this is just the beginning. This is, we're looking forward to tagging more sharks together. We have a lot of plans for shark tagging. We're not just going to stick to tigers and silkies. We'll do a wide range of species. And, uh, and hopefully that tracking website will be full of Belizean sharks very soon. And uh, we'll be getting good information to share with the National Shark Working Group so that we can, we can manage the resource together. So with that, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hand over to the next speaker. Thanks very much. I can close it down, right? Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chapman, for that interesting presentation. And indeed, it is, you get a sense of pride to see that information on our resources can feed into global management of our world's resources. I think what makes me even more proud is that the traditional knowledge of our fisher folks actually guided the scientific work that we are collecting and doing now. Um, and it helps you to build pride for the role that our fisher folks play. And it also helps you to appreciate the synergies between science and conservation and traditional careers and livelihoods, management, policy making for protection and for sustaining resources over livelihoods beyond the years. So thank you, Dr. Chapman. Thank you to our fisher folks who helped to guide this research and continue to stay involved. One of the quotes that, um, that stuck out with me when I read the pitch um, on the work being done was the fisher folk that said, you know, it was sharing of two perspectives and respecting where each of us coming from and seeing how uh, we dovetail. And of course, I'm paraphrasing, but he was speaking from his heart on how sharing that experience made him respect the viewpoint of researchers and, and scientists and the scientists respect the knowledge and the traditional experience that he has working the seas. So I think that is, um, a point that we have to underscore, uh, underscore in, in the work that is being done. And it, in the work that is being done across the Ministry of Blue Economy, it's combining both with a view to preserve life and livelihood for Belize and beyond, right? Now in Dr. Chapman's presentation, he mentioned Roe Foundation, which is another um, partner that we have gained here in Belize. And I just want to read a little bit about Roe Foundation so we all learn about who these international partners are. The Roe Foundation is in New York, um, and it's a philanthropic organization led by Greg Manocherian. One of the foundation's primary interest is shark conservation, which they have been involved with for nearly two decades. Roe Foundation has supported efforts that listed shark on the CITES, starting with the Great White in 2004 and culminating in trade regulations for nearly 20 threatened shark species. You'd say, but they're an apex species. How in the world could they be threatened? But I guess it's our behavior as human beings, right, that threatened them. They're at the top of their food chain, but we're still above them. So our behavior does impact them. And people like the Roe Foundation help us to make sure that we keep those two things in check. They have also actively supported CITES implementation efforts for sharks, surveys of major shark fin markets in Asia, and protection for sharks in Belize, including the new coxcomb of the sea protected areas. And we welcome their partnership. We welcome their openness to work with our traditional folks. And we look forward to great things indeed to see more of our sharks being pegged on that website that Dr. Chapman introduced to us. Now I'd like to move on to the keynote address from our minister. Our new minister in the Ministry of Blue Economy, 
Um, and this is a son of the soil, a true son of the soil. Honorable Andre Paris is in the possession of an associate's degree in economics and has eight years experience in the banking industry. He's an entrepreneur of 25 years and an employer of over 80 persons with his own bakery. Commendable, huh? Surely playing his role. Minister Paris has been actively involved in his community, San Pedro and Burgess Key, and has acted in various leadership capacities, such as the president and vice president of the Business Association of the Hamburgers Key, president of the Hamburgers Key Chamber of Commerce, and president of the Bakers Association. Minister Andrew Paris is no stranger to public service. He has brought two P's together, politics and his passion for his country. His endurance to serve his country has garnered him a seat in the political arena, he sits as our Minister of Blue Economy, and he is a fishing enthusiast. He's an avid diver. That certainly speaks to passion, right? This new portfolio is much in alignment with his key interest, an appreciation of the waters of the country, his understanding of the sustainability of the environment and sustainable growth and use of the aquatic resources and the fishing industry. Minister Paris remains mindful of the balance in preserving the aquatic environment while sustainably using its resources. In eight months, Minister Paris and his team has extensively embarked on the mission, familiarizing himself with various keys, reserves, fishing waters, stakeholders, partner agencies, both in NGO sector and in the public sector. Minister Paris brings to the Ministry of Blue Economy and Civil Aviation leadership skills that are central to meeting a mandate that he is aggressively pursuing. The ministry brags on its extensive work to realize its strategic plan, and we are proud to welcome Honorable Minister Andre Paris for the keynote address. Minister Paris. Thank you for that uh, kind introduction there, um, Master Shamanis. And um, I guess the protocols has been established, but I'd like to acknowledge still the members here of the, of the panel, Fisher folks, everyone here is watching us. That um, Thank you so much. Three decades ago, the government of Belize decided to protect the Kaxkum Basin showing that the area was an important habitat for jaguars, the great predator of Belize. Today, I am pleased to say that our Ministry of the Blue Economy and Civil Aviation is taking another such bold move forward for the great predators of our seas, sharks. Sharks are fished all over the world to provide a variety of products. In Belize, Sharks have been fished for generations. They supply meat and use almost in their entirety, from their fins down to their liver oil. Sharks are also valuable to our tourism industry. Many visitors dive our amazing barrier reef and atolls, hoping for a glimpse of a reef shark. Many tourists flock to visit famous shark dive sites in Belize, such as Gladden Spit, Shark Ray Alley, and Blue Hole, to name a few, to capture a moment with sharks that will become great memories they will share for years. In many parts of the world, sharks have been depleted because shark fishes have not been managed adequately. Sharks are slow to mature and have few offsprings. Many sharks live for decades and some for centuries. Yes, you heard right, centuries. This means that there is only a very small amount of shark catch that can be sustained without driving the population toward extinction. Our fisheries department recognizes 
that Belize has a small-scale shark fishery that requires proper management. In response to this, the department convened a multi-stakeholders national shark working group in 2005 to develop a plan of action for the conservation of sharks and make recommendations to the government for the appropriate policies and regulations to be put in place. Today, we celebrate this collaboration. Most recently, recommendations made by this group have resulted in cabinet's approval of a statutory instrument that will see increased efforts in the protection and preservation of our sharks in Belize. Belize is blessed to have three of only four coral atolls in the Western Hemisphere, Turnif, Glover's Reef, and Lighthouse Reef. These offshore coral reef systems are important habitat for sharks in Belize. The National Shark Working Group recommended that these atolls become protected areas for sharks. The new shark regulations will therefore prohibit shark fishing in these areas, creating a 1,500 square mile refuge for these animals that we, the coxcomb of the sea. We are confident that many species of sharks will benefit from these new protections. Protecting the atolls for sharks is a wonderful step forward, but the ministry also recognizes that some sharks, such as the great hammerhead and tiger sharks, migrate over hundreds or thousands of miles. It is important that we understand where they move so that we can develop management partnership between our nation and our neighbors. The new cooperative shark tagging program aims to fill these knowledge gaps. The cooperative shark tagging program is a new collaboration between shark fishers, Belize Department of Fisheries, and Moat Marine Laboratory in the United States. This group will tag a wide variety of shark species in Belize in order to provide information on their movements. The fishers are sharing their expert knowledge about how to catch sharks and are providing vessel support services to the researchers. The fishing communities of Belize produce some of the world's best captains and crews, and their expertise provide researchers better access to sharks for the study. The Moat Marine Laboratory research team will bring their expertise in the use of the latest animal tracking technology to study shark movements to share with fisheries and the National Shark Working Group. For some species, the team's goal will be to see if certain sharks stay within the coxcomb of the sea for their entire life. For other species, the goal will be to learn about their migrations across international borders. At the innovative and exciting Ministry of Blue Economy, one of our guiding, pr guiding principles is that science should be shared with all Belizeans. Some of the sharks that are being tracked will therefore be placed on the internet courtesy of the Shark Research Organization. Every Belizean will be able to go online and follow the lives of some of these incredible predators. I was very interested to see Dr. Chapman's presentation showing the movements of four of these very special creatures. Without a doubt, we are excited to be a part of this initiative. With guidance from the resource managers, the researchers, and the fishers working together towards a shared goal, I am certain that good governance will ensure sharks to continue to play an important role in blue economy of Belize for generations to come. I thank you. Thank you, Minister, for that presentation, and thank you for your reiteration of support for the methodology of the work and for the continued inclusion of all the parties and partners. We are nearing the end of our program, and um, they say we leave some of our most stalwart contributors to the work that we do and to the footprint, the positive footprint that we have that we like to make for last. I am very proud to interview a former schoolmate and to celebrate with her today the culmination of work that she has 
been working on for the past years with her team at the Fisheries Department and now with the new Minister of Blue Economy and the new CEO of Blue Economy, our international partners, Dr. Chapman. I'd like to introduce to you Ms. Beverly Wade. She's no stranger to most of you in this room, but to our guests who are viewing internationally virtually, please allow me a few minutes to introduce Ms. Wade. Ms. Beverly Wade is the Policy and Planning Advisor in the newly established and innovative Ministry of Blue Economy and Civil Aviation. She is directly responsible for the coordination of policy over a full range of domestic and international oceans affairs, blue economy development and sustainability issues in the pursuit of the broader objectives and support of government policy. Ms. Wade is the advisor to the minister and the chief executive officer in the Ministry of Blue Economy on all matters related to the aquatic sector and on its achieving the vision that is Belize's blue economy by the year 2030 is productive, resilient, and vibrant, contributing to the sustainability, substantially, sorry, to the socioeconomic well-being of the country and its people. Ms. Wade has been involved in the fisheries and oceans management for the last 27 years and was the fisheries administrator for the last 20 years. She has been directly involved in the implementation of measures to facilitate the sustainable development of Belize's marine resources. She has participated in and have led multidisciplinary teams working in a wide range of national, regional, and international projects and initiatives in the areas of fisheries management and development, marine conservation, sustainable development, integrated coastal management and development, and public policy development. Ms. Wade has been a member of the Executive Committee of the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism and OSPESCA, which are the regional organizations for CARICOM and Central America, charged with assisting governments in the sustainable development of their fisheries and aquaculture sectors. As the fisheries administrator, Ms. Wade was directly responsible for the establishment and declaration of marine reserves which currently fall under the legal mandate of the Fisheries Department. As one of the leaders in conservation, Belize has utilized the ecosystem's approach to fisheries management through key legislations, establishing marine reserves as fisheries management tools which fall directly under the jurisdiction and stewardship of the Belize Fisheries Department and management regimes for key species and coral reef. Ms. Wade has championed the role of small-scale fishers in the sustainable use and conservation of Belize's aquatic resources, and under her tenure, established various mechanisms to promote stewardship and tenure for fishers in Belize. Ms. Wade was the focal point for the UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Belize since 2013 and works closely with her government and stakeholder counterparts to coordinate the management and conservation of these areas. Ms. Wade now joins us to close our celebration of our resources, celebration of our progress, celebration of research, and celebration of the continued management of what God has blessed us with. Ms. Wade. Thank you, Madam Mistress of Ceremony. And yes, my former classmate, uh, for your kind introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our event today to recognize key partnerships in the conservation and management of shark in Belize. And this partnership is really central in us achieving a robust regime which seeks to ensure that these iconic species continue to play an important role in our marine environment as an apex predator. Today was not possible without the cooperative efforts of government, researchers, funders, and most importantly, the fishers themselves. They're all the way in the back there. Um, but you are our superstars today. 
And it's important for us to recognize your importance in all of our efforts as we move towards conservation and the responsible use of sharks in Belize. I'd like to take this opportunity on the behalf of the Ministry of the Blue Economy and Civil Aviation to thank the Honorable Andre Paris, Minister of the Blue Economy and Civil Aviation, for his commitment to the establishment of regimes for safeguarding of Belize's shark species and their sustainable use. Minister Paris, along with his CEO, Ms. Kennedy Carrillo, has been central in providing the leadership to ensure that our blue and aquatic resources have in place the requisite framework which promotes their long-term conservation and productivity. Thank you, Minister Perez and CEO Carrillo. I'd like to thank the staff of the Belize Fisheries Department who continues to work with stakeholders to form and nature partnerships for the effective management and use of our fisheries resources. The members of the Shark Working Group, who are also with us today for coming to the table equipped with data and expertise to advise on, robust, on a robust framework for shark conservation, management, and use. Thank you for your continued commitment and invaluable contribution. Dr. Damien Chapman, Senior Scientist, Director of the Shark and Ray Conservation Program at Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium. Dr. Chapman has been doing shark research in Belize, as you've heard earlier, for more than two decades, and have been an invaluable partner with the Belize Fisheries Department in the provision of science information for the management and conservation of sharks. Dr. Chapman has also been an advocate for the meaningful involvement of shark fishers and their communities in shark research. Yes, fishers collecting data for fishers and fisheries. Given their anecdotal knowledge of shark behavior and migration patterns in Belize. Dr. Chapman, thank you for supporting the Fisheries Department's approach of fostering stewardship and co-management with our small-scale fishermen in the use of sharks in Belize. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the shark fishers who recognize that they played an important role in ensuring that sharks in Belize are well managed and sustainably used. You have demonstrated true co-management and our national shark management regime have benefited tremendously from the knowledge and expertise you have brought to the table in your own right as the people most intimately involved with our sharks on a daily basis. Thank you for being good stewards of sharks in Belize and providing an excellent example of the role fishing communities can play in the sustainable use of our marine resources. All our efforts in Belize would not have been possible without the assistance and support of funders dedicated to shark conservation and management. I would like to thank Moat Marine Laboratory, our co-host for today's event, who have been committed to the work with sharks in Belize and have supported the research and programs led by Dr. Chapman over the years. The Ministry of the Blue Economy looks forward and eagerly anticipate the potential announcement of maybe a new and grander marine science and conservation partnership in the near future. The Ministry of the Blue Economy would also like to thank Greg Manacharian, who has a long history of supporting shark conservation efforts from the Georgia Aquarium, and the Ellen Fund, Ellen DeGeneres Conservation Foundation, as part of their new endangered campaign and co-host of today's event. The Mays Family Foundation, Earthwatch International, and Betsy and Peter Snow. We look forward to an even greater partnership 
for shark's conservation in Belize. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, thank you to the staff of the Ministry of the Blue Economy and that of the Belize Fisheries Department and to our Mistress of Ceremonies for today's event in doing such an exemplary job in making today a great success. And to the press who have recognized today's event as, an, as important and assisting us in socializing our story on recognizing partnerships for shark conservation and management in Belize. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Wade, and thank you for your service and continued dedication to Belize and protecting our marine resources. Um, We've come to the end of our program today, and I'd just like to thank the Radisson Hotel for hosting us today, um, for creating a safe spot for us to gather. I'd like to thank the gentlemen that you've seen milling around the room with the cameras, assisting us with our live streaming today. I'd like to thank our audience that tuned in via our live stream virtually, um, nationally and internationally, and thank all of you. Travel safe back to where you are. If you haven't gotten your shot, get your shot. I got mine second today, so just roll up that sleeve. The shot can't do anything worse than COVID-19 can do, so get pricked, right? And thank you all for coming. Please, be safe.